<laughs> we'll just start laughing. No problem. Everybody's already left. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Why are these two laughing again? I'm just starting right from the beginning of the damn video. I don't understand. Fire and ice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was my fire. Did you like that? I don't know what was, you're doing for ice. But... I have no, I just like a, like a square. Like oh, a square. I like that. Yeah. More voguing than square, I guess. But I like it. Anyway, welcome back, people. Um, fire and ice. We're at it again. Here we are. I think we missed a month, but that's okay. It's been a busy month. Yeah. It has been a busy month. So today we're going to have a little bit of a, I mean, I think what is a meandering conversation because I will, I will frame this for you. And by the way, if you do not, damn it, oh. if you're not aware, this is Lauren Rosen. Uh, she is at the obsessive mind on Instagram. You should check her out hundred percent. And, and if you're following or if you're coming here from my page, go follow <laughs> Drew Linsalata, the dot anxious dot truth. He's amazing. He's on Instagram. He's got a YouTube channel. Well, you know that cause you're here and, right. uh, you know, writes books. It's, a, it's awesome. Yeah, I, whatever comes to mind at the time is what I do. So um, <clears throat> a couple of, I guess it was last week. So mm -hmm. Laura and Kelly Frankie, who's another really great, you should follow. She's the- uh, The, the OCD, OCD therapist. Yeah. And she's uh, fabulous. Kelly, she's too. Kelly is awesome. I know Kelly and I know you guys are BFFs. So Kelly yeah. and Lauren do a podcast called Purely, o Purely OCD. Which that's is right. Great. Check it out. I'll link that also. Um, and that, that's part of your live streams that you do every week or every other week, whatever, on Instagram? Exactly. So we record live on Instagram and yeah. we have a little bit of back and forth with, with people who are tuning in and who have questions. And, yeah. and then, yeah, then we put it on podcast apps for. So check that out. I, I will link that in the video description if you watch on the YouTube so you guys can check out that podcast. It's really good. Uh, and Kelly is awesome too. So last week I happened to pop in to your Instagram live, which I rarely get to do, but that was a bit of a treat. And it was just, bear with me here. So Lauren and Kelly go back and forth and they're talking about how they can support each other because both of you guys have experience with your own OCD, right? Yes. Both specializing now in treating OCD. What a surprise, right? So, and, and good friends. So when they support each other and at one point, I don't even know if it was you or it was Kelly who said this, you know. I think it was Kelly. It was Kelly yep. right? And it was, you know, they're sort of talking about the conversations that they may have where you guys are kind of supporting each other, bringing your struggles to each other. And it was Kelly who said, well, you know, sometimes I just have to think and say, can I offer you a reframe? Would you like exposure? <laughs> and I don't know why it struck me as here are these two OCD specialists with their own struggles with OCD, helping each other out. Can I offer you a reframe? Which just struck me as odd because that is like the OCD equivalent of, can I get you something to eat? You know, <laughs> it's just strange. And I wanted to explore that today. Can I offer you a reframe? Yeah. And why like, that's important. And why that's important. Yeah. So yeah. Kelly's exact statement was, can I offer you a reframe? Would you like an exposure? So that was typically, that was exactly, can I get you something to eat? Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> um, explain what she meant there. So if you're bringing, let's say you're bringing a little issue to Kelly, you're struggling with, with your OCD is flared up a little bit and you bring it to Kelly as a friend. Yeah. Yeah. And she says that, what is she talking about? So what she's talking about is essentially like, okay, have you already gone over this in your mind rationally? That's her, that's shorthand for have we already reality tested whether or not this needs more attention? Mm -hmm. Um, which, and, or like, do you need assurance, right? Not reassurance, yes. but do you need, do you need like an outside perspective on this? Because that's valid and important. Not all, all assurance is bad when it becomes repetitive that it's a problem and so that's her basically saying all right like where are we at with this <laughs> what's the lowdown are we are we in the phase where we need to just talk it through and see how it makes sense to behave in response to the th this thought or should we dive right into exposure hour basically okay which is actually something that we've talked about before. <laughs> yes. Exposure hour. <laughs> Expo <laughs> Expo <laughs> most, most friends will go to happy hour. No, we're going nope. to exposure hour. That exposure hour. Totally yeah. fine. So yeah. I like that. That brings up that difference between assurance and reassurance, like assurance mm -hmm. is good, assurance education, assurance needed in life, right? Yes. Um, I know Sally Winston, Marty C. They write about that all the time, uh, assurance versus reassurance. And that's what the reframe is, what you're dealing with yeah. that sort of OCD flare up. Like, okay, yeah, you know, do we, yeah. do we do it on that ground or have we already done that? And now we got to go directly to the, to the source. Okay. Yeah. And no, so that's absolutely you, it. Yeah. How would you know? Like what's, how, how do I know the answer to that would be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is one of those intrusive thoughts and I need to work on it as such. Yeah. 
So generally speaking, if I've already talked with somebody else about it, like, let's say I still see a therapist with, yeah. you know, maybe once a month just to check in. So let's say I've talked to my therapist about it already. I'll be like, you know, I like that tells me maybe I don't need to run the content by somebody again. Maybe, um, especially we've, we've sort of come to a conclusion. If I'm wanting to bring it back up, that's a sign that maybe getting a reframe, getting some, some cognitive restructuring support from a friend isn't necessarily in my best interest. And I think it actually brings up a really interesting point, which is early in recovery. I'm sure you see this all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, people often are like, yes, reassurance, give me reassurance all the time. And I think one of the things that hopefully happens in the recovery process is that you start to uh, realize that mm, maybe, maybe I don't want that. <laughs> like maybe that's not going to benefit me. Mm -hmm. So you, you can gauge it yourself. And, and that's, I think something that is required in order for that kind of question from a friend to work is that sort of self-honesty, you know, yeah, I mean, that's experience. That's only going to come mm -hmm. with some experience. Then, I think. Absolutely. So at first it might be quite difficult to, uh, to check in with yourself and to, to choose the yeah. exposure over the reframe. So in the beginning, the question, can I offer you a reframe is usually going to be answered. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's, let's fact check that again. Yeah. Um, and if it's too exuberant, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's not. Well, that's probably an indicator, right? And yes. but I think that's reasonably common, like, like in my Facebook group, say in my community where we always have to be careful. Like the group is great and everybody tries to help each other out, but sometimes people forget like, well, this could be somebody in the beginning stages. So yeah. you can't hammer them on reassurance They're This is the first time they're ever asking. So that's, okay. yeah. and I'm guessing yeah. in a therapeutic setting, it's the same thing. If you're just starting work with somebody, it's not, no, I'm not answering any questions. I will not argue with your rational fear on your behalf. Right. Um, in the beginning, it's like, no, 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 we, we can do some fact checking to start this process. And then yep. we must drop this. That's absolutely it. It's yeah. uh, we start with maybe looking at what makes sense to do, especially with some of the really scary stuff that nobody's ever been able to offer reframes around, right? Like mm -hmm. POCD, for instance, yeah. or pedophilia themed uh, intrusive thoughts. People are, you know, they, they think that they are monsters. That's what happens when they come into treatment. So just acknowledging, hey, you know, this, these types of thoughts don't make you a bad person is a really important part of the process. Now, if we're six months in and it's like, but Lauren, what if this thought this, this time this is my favorite, this time it feels different yeah. <laughs> this, this time then I, I'm going to go, well, wait a second. And this is something funny enough that I do with my clients. I'm like, well, look, here's, here's my conundrum. I'm trying to determine whether or not you're asking for reassurance right now, you know, and it sort of seems like you want the answer, even though we've gone over this before. Mm -hmm. So I'm reticent. And sometimes it goes even a little further. Like I, I'm going to ask you to stop because they're compulsively confessing. Right. Uh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, and, and then I'll be like, whoa, 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 wait a second. I can't like, it's almost like, la, 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 la. like yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to listen because that's harmful to you. Right. Um, but one way or another that uh, beyond that initial moment, like of, of checking in, it's like, it can very easily become problematic. And so the, the alternative answer, can I offer you a reframe reframe or, or are we going into exposure hour would yep. be like, no, I don't need that reframe. Or you may decide as the therapist, like, no, 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 no. We've been through this before. You know what this is. So let's start to work on it the productive way. Totally. Which totally. is, let's talk about the exposures. I know we've talked yeah. about this before, but. Yeah, no, for, uh, <laughs> there's never enough talk about exposures, right? This is true. Um, so you go to happy hour with your friend, AKA exposure hour. <laughs> exposure and hour. what does that sound like? That sounds like uh, usually, especially if we're going back to those text messages, it's like, this is uncertainty. Here it is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to this question and it's hard and it's scary. And then it's usually followed up by um, words of encouragement. Like, you are a badass for sitting with and tolerating discomfort and uncertainty, and mm. usually some gifts, uh, preferably from Napoleon Dynamite. 
<laughs> wow, I am learning so much today. I feel like I could skip an entire term in my grad program now. Like, <laughs> there you go. Or I, I know about the gifts already. I can skip that course. <laughs> Credits. Um, no, it's great. And but I think what's interesting about that is okay. So we're not doing the reframe. We're going into exposure hour, and we're going to start exposure hour with literally the 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 I don't know if that's real about you mm. or not. That's yeah. the very first exposure. Maybe. Is this that's me? usually where I go anyway. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot right. of people think, yeah, it makes sense. But a lot of people hear, well, exposure, OCD, I'm going to do, start doing ERP. So immediately Lauren's going to start giving me, I have to start writing the thoughts down and saying them into a mirror and, and doing all those things, mm -hmm. running with scissors. But not so much. First, it's the acknowledgement of the uncertainty that you are not really sure about what that thought mm -hmm. means. And then maybe we go toward it. Does that sound right? It does. It, uh, with the one exception of, I think it is more advanced. I don't, I don't think that many people early in the process would go straight to that. I think that if I told them to do that, they'd be like, no, I'm not, I'm not good with that thing. Sit with the uncertainty? Well, not. just in, the, in that sort of brazen away. That makes sense. Do you know, I think it's, it's easier. You mentioned more planned exposures and it's easier to start out with those. Mm -hmm. And then when you find these sort of rogue incidental exposures coming up, you get to respond with these maybes um, and, and really face the uncertainty on purpose. So, I mean, obviously it's all down to accepting uncertainty, but it's a process and a practice. So um, not all in one fell swoop. Yeah. And anything so. else you're going to start small, I would guess. So that makes sense. Yeah. So as opposed to just throwing it on the table, sure. You may actually be a, you know, a, a mass murdering monster. Right. That's right. maybe down the road. You can throw that out there as to illustrate the uncertainty because the person understands what that means. But totally. It, it's probably more of a gentle explanation of like, listen, we have to try to not answer that question. That's right. Exactly. And I mean, it's it's back to this this assurance versus reassurance. I think people early on they think maybe, and they hear 50, 50, <laughs> like, eh, yes. maybe I'm going to go kill somebody tonight. Eh, we'll see, you know, yeah. and that's not yeah. what we're talking about. We're saying, okay, we've decided on a rational level, this is likely, and we're accepting uncertainty, but that's a, like a sliver of uncertainty. That's not a, it's highly probable that I'm going to go out and do something that's completely against who I want to be. You know, that's such a good point because there have been so many times when I've tried, when I've told people that, like, listen, the best mm -hmm. answer you could give this is maybe mm. just like with health anxiety, which I'm aware of health anxiety, they're taking it at that 0.01%. We've talked about this in a, in a press video and turning it into a 60% chance of death. Totally. No, 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 no. The statistics are not that, but your fear turns it into that. And I guess the maybe becomes flip a coin. Yes. Best of luck to you. Like maybe you're a murderer or maybe you're not. So I do understand that, I guess it makes sense. Like, no, 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 no. Is a yeah. very tiny, tiny, but I understand your emotional reaction here is blowing that up into certain doom. Totally. That's what makes That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it is what makes it makes it so hard. And it what that because that alarm is going off in your mind, that's that's why you presume that it is a you know 60% chance instead of a 0.01%. Um so it's learning like to it divorce the two, you know. Yeah. No, I was gonna say I feel like I should be paying you for CEUs like ahead of time in this video. But um <laughs> You know, I didn't think I never thought we'd get here. But in a way, that may be the difference between a thought like in a non-disordered state and that mm. disordered thought that would be part of the OCD complex. Like for me, I might think, is there a chance I, I might be a terrible person? Sure. I guess there's some chance. But then I move on because I understand that right. the chance is tiny. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, I guess I've made mistakes in my life. I may have hurt some people. But OK, I, yeah. I can move on from that. Whereas when you're in that disordered state, that becomes overpowered. Right. Because of that feeling, because that feeling yeah. comes in and hooks you and says, no, no, you can't possibly walk away from this. Yeah. It's super important. You have to. Pay yes, attention to it. totally. Yeah. <clears throat> let's um, let's get to the point where um, why you'd have to ask, do you need a reframe? Because I think and I see this in my community, although I'm not as heavily OCD oriented as you are naturally. How do I know? I, even though I'm down the road a bit, I'm having a new thought and I'm not sure this is part of my OCD. Is that the issue that you're addressing with? Can I offer you a reframe? Hmm. I think maybe to some degree, like, or it's, so I have, I have an interest in, like, I want to dialogue with you about this, I think, because 
I, I think a lot of people will say like, well, is it my OCD? Is it my panic disorder? Is it my anxiety? And I think that that's too simple. And I, people want to make it that black and white. People want to be like, oh, well, that's just my panic disorder. I can ignore that. Mm -hmm. But in the moment, the reality is that it's down to here's this thought and here's uncertainty. Do you know? And so when we're saying things like that, it's almost like we're saying, is it rational to respond in this way? But I think saying it in those terms is less likely to turn into uh, a problematic form of reassurance, if that makes sense. It does. It, it actually does make sense. Yeah. Because yeah. um, calling things like, oh, it's just an OCD thought or it's just an anxiety thought is a quick way to just, and it's, it's never, it's rarely that simple. It's a thought. And there are probably multiple elements in that thought. It's, right. It's a thought that anybody might have, which is true. And you right. can't say that. But there's also that sort of disordered part of the thought that that's the part you're working on. Well, right. And the response to the thought, I think, is where that lies. And I think it's especially true for things like health anxiety. You're not, it's not a health anxiety thought. It's that you're having a thought about your health. And in response to that, you want to go you know, next level with trying to make sure that that, that feared outcome doesn't come to pass. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but linking that back, cause I, I think that that was linked in, but now of course my brain is, you know, no, all the meandering. I could sort of link it back, I think. So really the, the question, is this an OCD thought? Is this part of my OCD or my panic disorder is probably best answered in, well, what do you feel the need to do right now? Yes. Do and how does it, yeah. Go do ahead. I, is this important? Am I supposed to work on it? Should I address this directly? The content? Okay. Then it's probably. Yes. Yeah. That's it. It's, it's like, it does it make sense to respond to this right now? Right. Right. And that answer may change too. That's the, the thing about that is it's not, you know, it's not, oh, well it's, uh, not doesn't make sense to go to a doctor right now. So it never makes sense to go to a doctor. It's like right now I don't have that information and it probably makes sense to just wait and see what happens. Which would you know? be in the case of say a health anxiety thought. Or a exactly. Right. Um, yeah. I was trying to tell people, are you, are you feeling a thing now or are you worried that you might feel a thing? Right. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, I guess that, you know, so that probably holds true with across all the spectrum, even in OCD, like, well, what's the situation, situation right now? I'm just unsure whether this thought says something about me. And yeah. so I'm feeling compelled to guarantee that it doesn't. Well, that's yes. probably an indicator that it is an OCD thought. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, totally. So that's what we're looking for is like on a, uh, based on odds, based on what seems likely uh, uh, with our rational minds, which is hard when you're, you've got the feelings, but everyone can access it. Like, what would you tell someone else? Would you tell somebody else that they're in a really bad spot? Or would you tell somebody else that they could probably wait it out? You know, like uh, what kind of advice would you give that usually helps people to key into what actually makes sense? Or what do you think another person in these circumstances would do? Do you think that they would respond by, you know, doing yeah. whatever X, Y, and Z? Um, yeah. Yeah. I dig that because people uh, I know in the panic disorder community, and you see this every day, people are lovely. They're trying to help each other and they can give each other good advice and then, you know, scratch their heads and say, why can't I take my own advice? Yeah. Is it all, all true in, in the OCD community as totally. well? Totally. Yes. Somebody can give you great advice for yeah. your OCD. But, right. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? That sounds horrible. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And then it's like, but this, this feels different. Yeah, is, I think that's advice. It comes from inside me, so therefore it's automatically important. Well, what's interesting too is I don't know if you see this in in the community that that you work with, but it, it's almost with OCD because it flip flops so much between different ideas um, or concepts or themes. Sometimes people can have a lot of objectivity around a theme that's not currently being uh, hit upon. Right. By, by them. It's not their theme at the moment. At the moment. Right. But it was maybe like a week ago and then it'll flip flop. Right. So they'll then go back to that theme. And then all of a sudden they're like, why, why was I ever worried about that thing? It's so I think that that can happen in lots of different forms of anxiety. Oh, it happens in the panic disorder and agoraphobia community all the time. Yeah. So someone will ask about, you know, a rapid heartbeat or something. And someone will invariably chime in with some very helpful advice. Oh, I used to be terrified of that. Now mm -hmm. I don't even think about it. But now they're gripped by, it feels like I can't breathe. 
Yeah. And then one day when they're over that, they'll look back and say, oh, why was I so worried about that? So yes, the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was terrified of that. Now I don't care. So I'll tell you that I don't care anymore. You're going to be all right. Yeah. Can you please help me with my jelly legs? Because I'm convinced that's certain doom. Because that's for sure going to be the end of me. The day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. um, Brains are so brilliant, but so strange also. It's those feelings, man. They'll get you every time. (laughs) Freaking feelings, man. Feelings. You know, there's there's a book called F Feelings. Yeah. And I know that became super popular for a while, like writing books with the word F-U-C-K in the title. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I should have wrote one, but I missed that wave. (laughs) Right. Um, okay. Maybe it'll come back. You can... come back. Like skinny ties, it'll come back. <laughs> it'll come back around. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's really true. One thing that I think is interesting when you say it's those feelings, man. I am fascinated by this. This is not a question. It's not anything. It's just me waxing over this thing. I always find it amazing with almost any feeling or thought. If I say something ridiculous to me, to you, you can mm-hmm. dismiss that instantaneously. We do it in religion and politics and What's the mm. best baseball team? Like we dismiss other people's thoughts as ridiculous in an instant and walk away from them. <laughs> but thoughts that come from inside us, we do not have the ability or we are conditioned to think I should not dismiss this thought because it's inside me. Yeah. How could that be? How have we conditioned ourselves? And I, I don't know. I'm really going to look into this. Is this true across multiple cultures worldwide or is it just a Western problem? Yeah. You know, what is it? That'd be fascinating for me to, to figure that out one day. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting question. And I, I think it's it's got to have at least some small part to do with it's it's in my voice. So it must mean so, like it must be reflective of something that I believe. Because right. um, we see that in just in terms of prioritizing values that are not your own as well. Yes. I, that, yeah, if, it's you, a, if it's not, it doesn't hurt me, then I don't care about it. We see that now. Well, no, I mean like... Um, taking on. So I like, I'm thinking about in the, in the context of eating disorders, mm-hmm. per- particularly like assuming the cultural, um, sort of the, the importance that you're placing on, uh, image body image. Okay. Even though that's not what you believe is rationally the most important thing in the world, because there's such an emphasis placed on it in the culture that you kind of you're brainwashed, right? You're absorbing that belief because it's been sort of repeated to you over and over and over again. So you can see somebody else's worth isn't tied to that, but your worth becomes, Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like still it's tied to it. That makes perfect sense. And the brainwashing. So body image is a perfect example of that, I guess, that can fuel that body dysmorphic problem or eating disorder. But I think the same holds true in the case of the things that you and I are addressing on a daily basis. Yeah. I can't tell you how difficult it is sometimes. And this ties back to, do you need to reframe? Like, is this a, is this a thing you really have to worry about? You're having a thought or you're experiencing an emotion. Like it yeah. seems incredulous for people to think, oh, I can disregard my own emotion. Is right. that even possible? Because I think to many, to a certain extent, we are somewhat brainwashed. Totally. No, 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 Absolutely. You, honor, you must delve, you must find meaning. You must, this is your inner voice. Your soul is speaking. Those are right. damaging. I mean, they're not bad statements, but when they, they go off the rails in our community. But they are. I don't know. I have I have feelings about this because uh, I love Dan- I love Daniel Kahneman and I you know all of his work around biases and heuristics and our our brains are flawed, like deeply flawed. And so saying something to someone like just trust your gut, it's like don't know. Don't why would you do that? Like. It did not turn out well for Romeo and Juliet, okay? Like, it's probably not going to turn out. Uh, and it might. It might, right? Sometimes it will. Right. But I think trusting your gut without incorporating rationality is a terrible idea. In general. Not yes. just in, in an anxiety context. Completely. I I do not disagree. I, but you and I are very similar. I think in personality, I agree with you 100%. I literally yeah. did a... 45 minute rant on that two years ago on my podcast. Why trust really? me? It's a terrible idea, especially for people that we're addressing on a daily basis. That's the totally. worst advice that there could possibly be. Trust your gut. Go with your intuition. It's telling you something. No, no, totally. no. It's epically wrong every single day in this context. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and people, I think in our, our communities as well, that confidence is conflated with certainty. And so, mm. you know, you've got this, um, you're after this feeling too, that doesn't, it's not, it's, exactly. it's not real. It's not like, it doesn't tell you anything because people can be totally confident and totally wrong. So 
you know, on one side, it's like, don't necessarily, yeah, I know all the time. I'm all the time and I'm wrong about a shit ton of stuff. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, no, totally, totally. Yeah. So I get it. Um, yeah. Interesting conversation. And I think it, so it all plays together in a way. But can I offer you a reframe which started the whole thing was a brilliant, brilliant thing for me to hear. I felt like it was sort of eavesdropping on a conversation that I wasn't supposed to be. But there was so much insight in there that I really appreciate that. We should have got Kelly on to do this with us, I guess. I know. Well, maybe she can come on next month. She's, yeah, we'll bring her on next yeah, month. It's always fun. Sure. We'll, we'll dig her. Um, but yeah, yeah can I offer a reframe? So let's, let's sum it up here. Yeah. When you're confronted with this scary thought, your two choices mm -hmm. are, do I need to test the content of this thought, which would be the, the reframe, right? Yeah. Or? Or do I need to face the uncertainty head on and, and just feel all of the discomfort associated with not knowing without trying to figure it out? Right. Because I'm not going to seek certainty on the content of this thought. I'm just going to leave it be. Right. I'm just going to let it sort of float there nebulously in the ether. So yeah, it's a yeah. yeah that's <laughs> I, I get that. I really do. I've seen people struggle with it every day. And then yeah. we did one early on of these. If you go to my YouTube channel to the, like, the fire and ice playlist. That has <laughs> I love that we have a playlist. I think okay. you'll see we did one called to ERP or not ERP. Like when do you mm -hmm. actually go toward this with the ERP exercises, repeating, writing it down, blah, blah, blah all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, when do you do that? Because at some point that could become part of your, kind of your reframe or do you want an exposure? Yeah. And that exposure could be doing some of that work, which we talked about it in another video. So, yeah. 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 It's always so fun talking to you. You have so many wonderful insights. I always learn so much. As well, we never have a shortage of words. That's for sure. <laughs> some people may wish we did. <laughs> hey, we came up with this literally like via text message an hour ago. Like, hey, let's yeah. talk about that. And I, I knew we would just, we could keep going. But, you know, I know it's true. About, about 25 to 30 minutes. So, um, Okay. Anyway, if you guys are watching on YouTube, just so you can keep commenting, I will try and answer them as best I can. If I have to drag Lauren in to answer one at some point, I will. But um, otherwise, go check out Lauren on Instagram at, right there okay. at, at The Obsessive Mind. Um, and? Do I have to put me up? It's yep. Myself put, up. Put Drew. <laughs> yeah, I'm point because I got the left side of the screen. Yeah, you point. That's good. That's, uh, yeah, go check out Drew. He's wonderful and marvelous. Oh, and his podcast, Hello, also called The Anxious Truth. Excellent. Um, lots of resources there. So thank you. Yay. I appreciate that. We're going to have to do one of those things where you do, um, you know, like what are they, like a TikTok or an Instagram takeover? But we can Whoa. do a podcast takeover. So one day Whoa. you're going to tune into The Anxious Truth and you're going to hear Lauren and Kelly maybe. What? And then you'll just do purely OCD. I love this. <laughs> I'm mean, like, oh, what am I gotten? What have I got myself into? <laughs> We're so hip. I'm very impressed with us. We right are now. incredibly hip. We are. I mean, just, we are sitting at the cool kids table now. So obviously, stopping us. All right, guys. <laughs> thanks for hanging in there with us. I appreciate it. We'll see you. I guess next month we'll do it again, like we always do. Sounds good. Thanks for joining. All right.